This video carries on from the, le the video just before this, so please watch that one first. In that, question, in that video, we did two questions, okay? The reason I split them like that is I realized that people prefer shorter videos, and so that's why, I've that's why I make shorter videos these days, usually around six to seven minutes long. So now what we're going to say is we're saying, and this is a very typical exam type of question. They say that if OR, so from O, O is always your center point, okay? So from O to R, R is over here. They're telling us that that is three units long. Then they say determine the length of HT. So if they tell us that OR is three units long, what does that mean for the coordinates of R? Would you agree that that means that R's coordinates will be three and zero, because its x value is three. Now they've showed us that HT is perpendicular to the x-axis. What that means is that it goes straight, okay, that wasn't straight. It goes straight down like that, okay? It isn't a diagonal type of line. So if a line goes straight down, then what does it have in common? Well, if a line goes straight down, its x value is the same at both places. So for example, this x value might be three, and the y value might be seven, and then this x value will also have to be three, but its y value might be two, then what would this length be? Well, that length would be five, because seven minus two is five. Notice we don't need, need to use the distance formula, because the distance formula only needs to be used if we have a diagonal line. But if it's vertical or horizontal, you can just minus the two values. What we can say then is that if the x value of r is 3, then that means that the x value at h is also 3, so I'm just going to write that over here, x value is 3, and the x value at t is also going to be 3. So, we know that h is on the straight line, so if we want to know what the y value is at that point, we can just plug the x value into the straight lines equation, so we can plug in 3 into the place of x, and that's going to give us a y value of 4, so the y value of h is 4. Then we can plug an x value of 3 into the parabola's equation for t, because t is on the parabola. So that will say f of 3 equals to 3 squared minus 3 times 3. Notice I use a bracket, and that's going to give us 9 minus 9 minus 4. And that's going to give us minus 4. Okay, so the y value of t is minus 4. So if you have a y value of 4 and another y value of minus 4, then what is that distance? Well, it's 8, because it's 4 minus minus 4, which is Eight. So the length of HT will be eight units. Now here's another way that they can ask this question. Now this one's similar to what we've just done, but they ask it in a different way. So in the previous question that we just did, I'm just going to quickly draw this over here. In the previous question, they gave you a dotted line. And then what they did is they gave you the length from here to here. So that gave you, that was X values. And then you could use this x value over here, and you plugged it into this point and this point, and then that allowed you to find this length. Now what we're doing is the following. Now what they do is they give you the length first, and then from that you need to work out this. You see, so it's the opposite. In the first one, we gave you the x first, and then you found the y values. Now they're giving you the y value first, and you need to find x. So how did they work out that length of WV? Well, to get WV, you would have to take the Y value of W, and you would have had to have minused it by the Y value of V, and that should give you a length of 7. For example, if WU or UW is 4 units, and WV is 3 units, then V's Y value would actually be minus 3, right? Because it's below. So then what you would have said is the Y value of W, which is 4, minus the Y value of V, which is minus 3, and then you can see how we would have ended up with 7. So the main idea is to find the distance between two points, you minus them. Because to get from 10 to minus 2, that's 12. Because 10 minus minus 2 is 12. And it must always be the top one minus the bottom one. So in a question like this, you might want to remember y top minus y bottom should give us 7. But now, 
we can't really do anything else at this point because what are we looking for? We're looking for the length of OU. Now is OU, does it make you think of the X value or the Y values? Well it's the X value, right? If you could get the X value at, we need to get the X value at U. So what we do now is we replace these Y values over here with X's. Now how do we do that? Well the Y value at the top, which is this one over here, that's the straight line. So you can replace this part with its actual equation. So instead of having it as the Y value, you can replace it with X plus 1. Then you say minus and then you put a bracket because whenever you minus you should always use a bracket. Then you can replace the y value of the bottom which is the y value of v with its equation which is x squared minus 3x minus 4 and then you can make that, we want that length to be equal to 7. So now we can just go simplify so we put the minus inside the bracket so it's minus x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals to 7. Now we just simplify and solve. So that'll be negative x squared plus 4x minus 2 equals to 0. See what I've done there? The minus x squared stays as it is. These two became 4x and then the 1 and the 4 became 5 but then when you bring the 7 over it becomes minus 2. You could then solve this however you like. You could maybe get rid of the negative. You could factorize. I'm just going to plug it into the quadratic formula which is that one over there, and then I'm going to solve for x. And when you do that, you get two answers, which is very interesting, but I'm going to explain to you what, what's happening. So you get two answers, 0 0.59 and 3.41. So what they're trying to tell you there mathematically is that when x is 3.41 or 0 0.59, then the length between the two graphs is 7. So let's see how that works. So if x is 0 0.59, well, that would be somewhere over here, maybe. And so we can see that the length between them, they're saying that that length would be 7. Then if we move a little bit further, what would happen to the length between the two graphs? Well, it becomes more, right? So it's probably like 8 or 9. But then as we carry on a little bit further, what happens to the length over there? Well, now the length is becoming slightly smaller. And so there are two places where the length between these two graphs is equal to 7. And then if we had to carry on, you'd see that the length becomes very small. But there are two places where the length was equal to 7. So we can say that OU can have a length of 0 0.59, or it could also have a length of 3.41.